Then Emily, are we ready to get started? Oh. All right, it is 7.03 p.m. and I'd like to call this meeting to order. While this meeting is being held in person in consideration of ongoing COVID-19 health concerns, we are also offering the opportunity to participate via Zoom if preferred. Instructions on how to participate virtually are included in the city council calendar item listed on the front page of missionchaos.org. Please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Robin, please call the roll. Thomas. Hey, Thomas. I see her online, but I think she's muted. Here. Apologies. <laughs> Bolting House. Here. Loudon. Here. Ryard. Here. Kring. Here. Inman. Here. Chosey. Here. Davis. Here. All right. We do have a revised agenda for tonight's meeting, so I would entertain a motion to approve our revised agenda. Mayor, I move that the City Council approve the revised agenda for March 15th, 2023, as printed. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Robin, please call the roll. Davis? Aye. Chosey? Aye. Inman? Aye. Kring? Aye. Ryard? Aye. Loudon? Aye. Bolting House? Aye. Thomas? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, we do have, we do not have any public hearings tonight, so we will move into our special presentations. We have four special presentations this evening. Our first presentation this evening is a proclamation recognizing seven days make a ripple change the world, who is working to overcome hate by promoting kindness and understanding through education and dialogue. This year, theme days of love, discover, others, connect, you, go, and onward will seek to bring together people from different faiths and cultures to overcome hate with acts of kindness from April 6th through 15th. For these two weeks, seven days will offer events that promote the kindness, respect, and understanding values that our community embraces not only during these two weeks, but throughout the year. As a seven days supportive city, Mission will not only be promoting the Metro-wide events, but we'll be sponsoring a citywide cleanup event later in April, bringing together residents, HOAs, and businesses in service to the community. I am pleased to welcome Ruth Biggis to accept our seven days supportive city proclamation. Thanks to you and all members of the foundation for the work you are doing to promote kindness. Yeah, Ruth, yep. Well, we just want to thank the city so much for your support. Uh, mission has been a leader. Thank you to uh, Council Member Davis, who actually came to our news conference and we were announcing all of our events. We would invite you to come to the Kindness Breakfast on April 5th and to go our walk on April 16th. We moved out into Johnson County again this year. There's a little thing called the NFL draft that uh, <laughs> forced us to do a little bit of a pivot, but it's wonderful to have communities like Mission who are supportive of that. And if I can just leave some materials or pass out, this will give you details. <laughs> and we appreciate you so much. Great. Thank you so much. All right, our second special presentation this evening, I would like to welcome Sarah Markowitz from JCRB AJC. JCRB AJC is a group working to educate, working to educate to proactively prevent anti-Semitism in schools, workplaces, and the community. And they're here tonight to educate and help guide us towards a working definition of anti-Semitism for the city of Mission. Thank you all for allowing me to be with you here tonight. My name is Sarah Markowitz. I am the Director of Education and Programs for the Jewish Community Relations Bureau, AJC. We are the Jewish Community Advocate for Combating Anti-Semitism and Pursuing Justice in our region. And we are currently visiting cities around the Metro to raise awareness about the issue of rising anti-Semitism. Uh, next slide, please. No, that's the beginning. <laughs> 
Thank you. So why do we need to talk about anti-Semitism in 2023? Anti-Semitism, including violent anti-Semitism, has been steadily rising in the United States over the past five years. In anti-Semitic incidents, the United States reached an all-time high during 2021. Next slide, please. Recently, AJC released its annual State of Anti-Semitism in America report. The report found that 41% of American Jews reported the status of Jews as less secure than it was a year ago. That is a 10 percentage point increase from 2021, and it reflects the insecurity that many American Jews are feeling right now. Next slide, please. AJC also found that 26% of American Jews, about one in four American Jews, reported being the target of at least one anti-Semitic incident over the past year. Next slide, please. Locally, our Jewish community numbers about 21,000 here in the Kansas City metro area, including there being Jewish households right here in Mission, Kansas. And as you may remember, our own Jewish community was attacked by a neo-Nazi back in 2014. And sadly, we have found that anti-Semitism in our region continues to be a very real reality, reflecting the trends we are seeing nationwide. We recently conducted a survey of Jewish middle school and high school students in our area, and of the Jewish students surveyed, 81% of those students reported experiencing or witnessing at least one form of anti-Semitism in schools. 81% of those Jewish students in our survey said they have experienced or witnessed at least one form of anti-Semitism in their schools. And this survey was sent out in the beginning of the school year, well before the incidents of vandalism occurred at Blue Valley High School, which you may be aware of. Given the high rates of anti-Semitism nationally, um, we are certainly not immune to that here in Kansas City. It is crucial that we work to take steps to combat anti-Semitism. Next slide, please. One of the biggest barriers to combating anti-Semitism is the severe lack of an understanding by the general public of what it is and is not anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism is known as the oldest form of hatred. It's 2,000 plus years old, and it's perpetuated through centuries-old tropes and dog whistles and various manifestations that can be very difficult to identify. Anti-Semitism is not just hatred of Jews. It's a perception of Jews that's often rooted in conspiratorial thinking. Next slide, please. Despite rising anti-Semitism and anti-Semitism being the oldest form of hatred, according to AJC's State of Anti-Semitism in America report, 31% of Americans have either never heard the term anti-Semitism or don't know what it means. 31%, about a third of Americans have never heard the term anti-Semitism or don't know what it means. Next slide, please. Defining anti-Semitism is part of the solution because we can't fight what we can't define. The International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance Working Definition of Anti-Semitism provides us with a comprehensive description of anti-Semitism, which is then accompanied by a set of practical examples that can be used in context to determine whether something is or is not anti-Semitic. On this slide here, you can see the core text of the definition. And what is so important about this definition is that it identifies anti-Semitism as more than just a hatred of of Jews, but a perception of Jews. And this, this definition is meant to serve as an educational tool to assist those who are responsible for identifying and combating anti-Semitism. The IRA definition is fully nonpartisan. It is the gold standard definition used by governments around the world. Uh, the Obama, Trump, and Biden administrations have all used the definition. It is used by the U.S. Department of Education, the U.S. Department of State. It's been adopted by over 29 countries, over 39 countries, and in 29 states. It was adopted by the state of Kansas last March and has been most recently adopted by the cities of Kansas City, Missouri and Kansas and Leewood City in Kansas. And we are currently working with other municipalities um, in the metro area to adopt the definition. So JCRB AJC is looking forward to working with missions uh, mayor and your council and your city staff um, on a resolution that would have mission adopt the IRA working definition of anti-Semitism and adopting the working definition of anti-Semitism as the the official definition of anti-Semitism on record in Michigan, Kansas, would ensure that all elected officials and city staff and law, law enforcement have a common understanding of what anti-Semitism is, what it looks like, and it can be particularly useful to law enforcement to identify um, bias-motivated crimes. So thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. And Laura, just to clarify, this will come forward next month. Okay. Do we have any questions for Sarah at this time? Thank you. No, thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we, yeah, we will take that to our finance committee in April to begin discussion of a resolution and we'll continue to work with JCRB and Sarah on that. And then we also have a proclamation tonight recognizing Fair Housing Month in Mission. This April marks 56 years since the signing of the Federal Fair Housing Act. It is important that we recognize and raise awareness of each individual's rights under fair housing. We are committed to equal housing opportunities in our community, and I am honored to proclaim April as Fair Housing Month in the City of Mission. Our final special presentation this evening, for which I think we've got a packed room, is recognition of a recent promotion within the Mission Police Department. Chief Madden, will you please share this information with Council? Thank you, Mayor. Um, in policing, the rank of Sergeant is widely recognized as the most important role in a law enforcement agency. Sergeants are the first line supervisors that respond to critical incidents and lead the officers through those. They evaluate and coach the officers and they mold officers into future leaders themselves. <clears throat> Tonight, I have the privilege of introducing our newest Sergeant to all of you. Uh, Drake Sparks was hired in January of 2018. During his five years of service, he has proven himself to be eager, quick to learn, and treats everyone with respect and dignity. In addition to that, Drake has taken on many extra tasks, which include an emergency vehicle operations instructor, a field training officer, and records management system administrator. Drake comes from a family of law enforcement. Drake's father retired from the Marion Police Department and his brother is currently a sergeant at the Osawatomie, Kansas Police Department. An important tradition we have here is the pinning of the badge and collar brass onto the uniform of promoted staff. This evening, Drake's fiance, Marissa, will be pinning his sergeant's badge, and mother and father, Todd and Diane, will be pinning his chevrons. So you guys come forward. Yeah, you can appear in here, face, face out, I guess. You know how they This way. Mayor, I move the City Council recess to executive session in accordance with KSA 75-4319B1 to consult with an attorney under KSA 75-4319B2 
to discuss the legalities of potential zoning code amendments. Also attending the executive session will be City Attorney Dave Martin, Land Use Attorney Pete Heaven, and City Administrator Laura Smith. The open meeting will resume in the council chambers at 7.38 p.m. in 20 minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Right, we are in executive session.
Okay, do we have everybody? All right, everybody, it is 7.38 p.m. and we will be returning from our executive session. Um, we do not have any items related to the issuance of notes or bonds this evening, so we will move into our consent agenda. Our consent agenda has 11 items tonight. Our council committees met on March 1st and fully discussed each of these items. The committees agreed that the items listed on our consent agenda are routine enough to be considered under a single motion. If a council member or member of the public would like an item removed from the consent agenda, they may request that at this time. If not, I would entertain a motion to approve. Mayor, I move the city council adopt the consent agenda as printed items 5A through 5K. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Robin, please call the roll. Cream? Aye. Josie? Aye. Bolting House? Aye. Davis? Aye. Ryard? Aye. Thomas? Yes. Inman? Aye. Loudon? Aye. Motion carries. All right, next up is public comments. If any members of the public would like to make a comment on items that are not on our agenda tonight, now would be the time. If you are participating through Zoom, please either add your comment in the chat feature and it will be read out loud or note that you would like to speak and we will call on you shortly to make your comment verbally. Please remember your comments or questions are visible to everyone in the meeting. If you are part of our in-person group tonight, please raise your hand, but stay seated and we will call on you to come to the lectern to make your comments. When you make your comment, please state your name and city of residence for the record. Also be conscientious of others trying to speak and speak slowly and clearly. If I need to confirm something that may have been difficult to hear, I will ask for clarification. Emily, any comments online? Seeing no hands, we would move into action items from our planning commission, but we do not have any items from the planning commission tonight, so we'll move into our committee reports. Council Member Boltinghouse, will you please provide a report from the Finance and Administration Committee? Yes, thank you, Mayor. The Finance and Administration Committee met on March 1st and considered three items, the meeting minutes, animal sheltering contract, and a memorandum of understanding with Johnson County Mental Health for co-responder services were all approved earlier this evening under the consent agenda. No items will be considered tonight under the irregular agenda. That concludes my report. All right. Council Member Chosie, will you please provide a report from the Community Development Committee? Yes, thank you, Mayor. The Community Development Committee also met on March 1st and considered 13 items. The meeting minutes, the community center projector replacement, lifeguard pay adjustments, the referral bonus program for part-time staff, Mohawk Park picnic table purchase, and Fox Ridge Drive, uh, Fox Ridge Drive Phase 2 construction inspection agreement, acceptance of easements for Fox Ridge Drive Phase 2 street, re street rehabilitation project, the 2023 street preservation project construction inspection agreement, and acceptance of easements for the 2023 Residential Street Preservation Project were approved under the consent agenda. A super pool pass agreement, Mission Family Aquatic Center 2023 fees and charges, Fox Ridge Drive construction contract bid award, and 2023 Street Preservation Project construction contract bid award will be considered under the regular agenda tonight. So item 8A tonight is the super pool pass agreement and letter of understanding. Mission has participated in the Super Pool Pass program since 2009, with the exception of the 2020 and 2021 outdoor swim seasons because of COVID-19 closures or concerns. This program offers residents and non-residents who qualify, uh, those purchasing a membership the previous year, the opportunity to attend participating cities' pools if they purchase a membership to the pool in their home community, along with a Super Pool Pass. The program was designed to increase attendance at local outdoor aquatic facilities and provide members access to newer different amenities at various pools for a reasonable price. Fairway, Leewood, Merriam, Mission, Prairie Village, Roland Park, and the Johnson County Parks and Recreation District, JCPRD, have historically participated in the program. However, Merriam and JCPRD are not participating for the second straight year. Total revenue generated for Mission from the Super Pool Pass program since its inception is $78,341. In order to participate in the program, each city executes the interlocal agreement and a swim meet letter of understanding annual, annually. The letter of understanding allows for pass holders of a host city uh, free admission to any of the other entities' pools on days when swim meets uh, result in closure of a particular facility. Mayor, I move the city council authorize the mayor to execute the interlocal agreement indicating missions participation in the super pool pass program for 2023 
and to approve the swim meet letter of understanding. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, Robin, please call the roll. Thomas? Yes. Ryard? Aye. Loudon? Aye. Davis? Aye. Boltinghouse? Aye. Inman? Aye. Kring? Aye. Chosi? Aye. Motion carries. Item 8B this evening is the Mission Family Aquatic Center 2023 fees and charges. Over the past two seasons, costs associated with staffing, utilities, chemicals, and maintenance have increased. Some increases were thought to be temporary surges coinciding with shipping and logistics inputs. However, food, chemical, and staff wage costs are increasing again this season. Due to increasing costs associated with operating the Mission Family Aquatic Center, Staff is recommending adjusting the membership model to increase revenues and simplify the registration and verification process as shown in the attached memo. The proposed changes for both 2023 and 2024 will start to address the length of time the facility has gone without any price or fee increases. Council will also consider adopting a, a policy that would adjust fees incrementally each year in order to maintain an established cost recovery target. The proposed pricing changes outlined generate an estimated $11,055 in additional revenues for 2023, which will help reduce the general fund subsidy required to operate the Mission Family Aquatic Center. Additionally, it will allow patrons to effectively compare membership value with Fairway, Prairie Village, and Leewood's community outdoor pools. Mayor, I move the City Council approve a revised pricing schedule for the Mission Family Aquatic Center, which simplifies marketing and increases transparency. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, Robin, please call the roll. Loudon? Aye. Thomas? Yes. Green? Aye. Inman? Aye. Bolting House? Aye. Chosey? Aye. Ryard? Aye. Davis? Aye. Motion carries. Item 8C this evening is Fox Ridge Drive from 51st Street to Lamar Construction Contract Bid Award. On May 18th, 2022, the City Council approved a resolution for adopting the five-year Cars Street Improvement Program for 2023 through 2027, which included the Fox Ridge Drive Phase 2 from 51st Street to Lamar Avenue Street, Rehabil Street Rehabilitation Project in 2023. The scope of work includes full-depth pavement reconstruction, sidewalk and retaining walls, stormwater improvements, traffic signal buyout and replacement, street lights, and pavement markings. The project was bid in January and bids were opened on February 22nd with five bidders responding. VF Anderson Builders LLC submitted the lowest and most responsive bid. Staff is recommending approval of the bid by VF Anderson Builders LLC in an amount not to exceed $5,167,691. Construction is anticipated to begin in April or May of 2023 and is estimated to be completed no later than December 1st, 2023. Mayor, I move the City Council approve a contract with VF Anderson Builders LLC for construction of the Fox Ridge Drive Phase 2 from 51st Street to Lamar Avenue Street Rehabilitation Project in an amount not to exceed $5,167,691. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, Robin, please call the roll. Chosey? Aye. Davis? Aye. Ryard? Aye. Kring? Aye. Thomas? Yes. Bolting House? Aye. Loudon? Aye. Inman? Aye. Motion case. Item 8D this evening is the 2023 Street Preservation Project Construction Contract Bid Award. The 2023 Residential Street Preservation Project includes four streets, which were selected from the proposed 10-year program for maintenance and rehabilitation of local and residential streets based on pavement condition. They are Beverly Avenue from 57th Street to 56th Street, Riggs Avenue from 53rd Street North to the Dead End, 50th Terrace, from 51st Street East to the city limit, and 61st Terrace from Lamar Avenue to Woodson Street. The scope of work for these streets to be constructed in 2023 includes full depth pavement reconstruction, curb and gutter removal and replacement, and stormwater improvements or repairs. The 2023 Residential Street Preservation Project was bid in January and bids were opened February 21st, 2023. Based on rising prices due to inflation and supply chain issues, two of the four streets, Beverly Avenue and 50th Terrace, were bid as bid alternates to provide flexibility due to potential budget constraints. There were three bidders with GB Construction LLC submitting the lowest and most responsive bid. The Residential Street Preservation Program was built with the goal of allocating $2 million annually for design, construction, and construction inspection. Although the cost for constructing all four streets exceeds $2 million for 2023, there are adequate funds in the street CIP budget for this project. Staff will continue to evaluate future street projects and available budget for future construction. 
Any funds not spent in the current year will roll over to a future year and will be dedicated to this residential street, <clears throat> excuse me, residential street program. Mayor, I move the city council approve a contract with GB Construction LLC for construction of the 2023 residential street preservation project in an amount not to exceed $2,779,387.51. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, Ken. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can address this. Um, what is going to be the sequencing? Uh, have you discussed that at all with the contractor in terms of which streets and how it's going to be handled uh, during the year? Is this on the residential side, Ken, your question? Good evening. Um, so I'm working on a letter that I was going to send out tomorrow and it has a tentative schedule and it's kind of all over the place because they're going to do stormwater first. So they're starting on the easternmost RCB on 61st Street and repairing that. Then they're going to Reeds and doing stormwater there. Then they're going to Riggs and doing stormwater there. Then they're going back to 61st. This may be more than you need to know <laughs> to do. The westernmost RCB then they're going to start working on the grading and curb on Beverly and Reeds. Then they're going to Riggs and then they're going to 61st Terrace. So what I tried to explain in the letter, and I can give everybody a copy too. I mean, it's a conceptual schedule and it's going to change based on what they find. But what residents will notice is they're on my street. Where did they go? Mm -hmm. You know, but you got to get all the stormwater work done first before you can do anything else so there's going to be a period of time after they do that work where they're going to jump around and you may not see them for a little bit until you know they're starting up again so they're starting may 15th and they won't be done till october so it's a it's a schedule that's you know pretty detailed but um the website we're going to try to update that weekly so that people can see what what's going on Thanks. That helps. Thanks. Any other questions? Seeing none, Robin, please call the roll. Davis? Aye. Boltinghouse? Aye. Kring? Aye. Ryard? Aye. Josie? Aye. Inman? Aye. Thomas? Yes. Loudon? Aye. Motion carries. Mayor, that concludes my report from the Community Development Committee. Great, thank you. We do not have any unfinished business tonight, so we will move into our new business. We have two items of new business this evening. Our first is an ordinance establishing a temporary moratorium on all new business licenses for establishments selling tobacco, electronic cigarettes, and or electronic cigarette paraphernalia in the city of Mission. Ms. Smith, can you please explain this ordinance for council? Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. So I think everyone's aware that since October of last year, we've been having uh, discussions in our committee meetings in particular uh, around issues related to our zoning code regulations and how those apply to retailers selling tobacco, electronic cigarettes, or electronic cigarette paraphernalia. Most recently, we discussed that issue at our February 1st Finance and Administration Committee meeting, at which time the council provided some additional direction to staff in terms of uh, alternatives and options that you wanted us to continue to research and bring back for your consideration. As we've talked about, because these are zoning code regulations um, and because it there's an extended period of time through which um, we need to discuss, review, evaluate, and then it is a process that would go through a public hearing at the planning commission level, ultimately then coming back to the council. We felt that in order to really um, provide adequate um, sort of time for a thorough review and evaluation of all of these regulations and the interrelationships that it made sense um, to recommend that you consider establishing a temporary moratorium on the issuance of any new business licenses related to establishments selling um, tobacco, electronic cigarettes, or electronic cigarette paraphernalia, and that that temporary moratorium be established for a period of 150 days um, the time was determined based on the, the time estimates that we think it would take us to get through that full evaluation and approval process. So staff has, um, based on those conversations that have been ongoing over the last several months, staff, uh, in um, with the assistance of Mr. Heaven, drafted the moratorium ordinance for your consideration this evening um, to just give you, you, obviously we've been very transparent in the conversations that we've had up to this point and wanted um, to be able this evening to uh, 
signal our intent to continue to discuss that. All right. I would now entertain a motion on this item. Mayor, I move that the city council approve the ordinance establishing a temporary moratorium on all new business, all new business licenses for establishments that sell tobacco, electronic cigarettes, and or electronic cigarette paraphernalia for a period of 150 days. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Are there any council questions for Laura or discussion? Yes, Debbie? When would this period begin? If upon um, publication of the ordinance? Upon publication of the ordinance. So that would be next Tuesday. Any further questions? Yeah, Ken? I just want to say thank you to staff for the work that you've done in preparation of this and, and the thoughtfulness that you went through given consideration to this request that I had made back in the fall. Thank, thank you. you. All right, any further questions? Seeing none, Robin, please call the roll. Ryan? Aye. Davis? Aye. Boltinghouse? Aye. Inman? Nay. Spring? Aye. Thomas? Yes. Josie? Aye. Loudon? Aye. Motion carries. All right, our second item of new business tonight is a consideration of a pre-development agreement with Moffitt Development Co. Inc. for the 58 Knoll project. Ms. Smith, could you please share the details with council? Yes, thank you, Mayor. So you heard a presentation at your March 1st Community Development Committee from Mr. Moffitt, uh, who is the developer of the 77-unit multifamily project uh, known as 58, the 58 Knoll project. Um, it has been through the planning commission. Uh, you approved a preliminary development plan last year. He's had a final development plan that has been approved by the planning commission. He's actually submitted his construction drawings. He was here a couple of weeks ago sharing with you sort of the impacts um, in, in terms of interest rates and the financing market and construction costs and expressing his interest and desire to submit for your consideration and application for the use of uh, property tax abatement in connection with the project. Um, so uh, that is not a, an incentive tool that we have used, uh, but it is certainly a tool that is available to the city. Uh, Mr. Moffitt continues to express his uh, intent to submit that application. So I think everyone's familiar that when we enter into a period of negotiations for incentives with a developer, we have entered into a pre-development agreement um, that establishes, depending on kind of the scope and nature of that, often establishes a time period within which to negotiate or try to reach agreement on any um, uh, terms in a development agreement. Uh, and then it also requires the developer to escrow uh, $10,000 upfront uh, to assist in covering the costs of review by our financial attorney our land use attorney or our bond counsel, as might be appropriate. Uh, so what you have before you this evening um, is that, and it did not, typically when we have the opportunity, we will bring those through committee. This is the same standard form of the agreement that we have used uh, in all other instances. It has been reviewed by Mr. Moffitt and his attorneys. Um, they are comfortable with that. Uh, again, I would reiterate, as is included in the development agreement, which was uploaded um, to the packet today. So if you didn't have a chance to look at that, uh, it is it is there. Um, and I would be happy to answer any questions. But um, this really just kind of sort of protects and preserves our interests, as we often talk about, and make sure that we aren't extending ourselves or expending any dollars on a project, um, ultimately, the your granting of any incentives is absolutely discretionary. Uh, so the pre-development agreement does not commit you to anything beyond considering the use of the incentives and considering the request formally. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yes, Debbie. Have you had a formal request in writing from them for the tax abatement? He has not yet submitted his application, um, but he they have reviewed and have agreed that they would be willing to enter into the pre-development agreement. And we have provided them with a list of items from identified by Mr. Kimmel that they would need to sub submit sort of in concert with that formal application. So we, we haven't yet started into the financial analysis, which would include, include a feasibility study and many of the things that we talked about. Uh, during the committee meeting, um, 
but this would just allow us to start that evaluation without us expending uh, our dollars that would be at the developer's expense. Yeah, Ken? I know that with tax increment, increment financing, we have a measure, we have a base, and then an incremental uh, change in that base in terms of value added. Do we have any metrics for value added with regards to this kind of tax abatement request? And that, that will be all part of the analysis and the feasibility. So I think uh, as we discussed, there's still sort of that but for test, right? So that still a project is going to demonstrate or Mr. Kimmel will do his evaluation to determine whether or not, you know, with the request for incentives, um, the project would be viable. Uh, and all of that will be laid out as we go through those conversations. So I can't speak very eloquently because we haven't done one here, but I think all of that information will... It's it's different than TIF, but I think all of the the facts and that information that I heard you all asking for during the committee meeting process will be something that comes out through this evaluation. Yeah, Laura, just commenting or furthering my comments at the committee meeting that my understanding of the tax abatement statutes is that it's tied to the economic benefit generated by the project. So I would hope that in, um, you know, in connection with any feasibility study, we would act either ourselves or ask the developer um, to put together evidence of that economic development impact that would be greater than the ask on the incentives. Right. And you will recall that the, again, entirely discretionary, uh, but tax abatement, it could be anywhere from zero to 100% of the taxes for an, up to a 10 year period. So there's a lot of flexibility within that. And similar to a TIF or a CID project that we've evaluated in the past, you want to understand sort of all of the inputs in, into that as you evaluate and make any decisions. All right, I would now entertain a motion on this item. Mayor, I move the City Council approve a pre-development agreement with Moffat Development Company Incorporated for consideration of a 77-unit multifamily redevelopment project known as the 58 and all project. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, Robin, please call the roll. Inman? Aye. Chosi? Aye. Ring? Nay. Loudon? Aye. Bolting House? Aye. Davis? Nay. Thomas? Yes. Bayard? Aye. Motion carries. All right. There being no further business items for consideration, we will move into comments from the city council. This is an opportunity for comments from our council members. Does anyone on the council have something they'd like to share? Yes, Debbie? I have something quickly. And because this was part of the public record and it's been introduced relative to where we are with Unleashed, I did have a request for financial help from them tonight via email. And if most of you know, I had another request like that from the mayor that was a scam. Anyway, it went into further detail about why they need money and please donate. So I'm the reason I'm bringing this up, I don't know how many other people in this city got that, but there's a potential turmoil there and we kind of need to be careful about uh, people responding to financial support for, for this entity that seems to be having some problems right now. Just FYI. Any other council comments? Seeing none, next, oh yeah, Ken. Congratulations, Councilman Bolting House. <laughs> <laughs> Gerard Bolting House. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. It was Ward One resident. But we don't have a baby picture up on the big screen. I'm going to count this as a fail. <laughs> <laughs> I can get, I can provide one. <laughs> I can provide one. <laughs> Very exciting news. <laughs> All right. Next, we will have our council committee liaison reports. These reports allow the entire governing body to stay up to date with the various activities of the boards, commissions, and committees. First will be Council Members Kring and Thomas for Sustainability Commission. Uh, Hillary, you weren't there, but I don't know if you have comments on the meeting. Go for it, Debbie. Uh, I stayed in the meeting the first 10 minutes and then got the request uh, from the city for something, so left the meeting. So Emily, I would defer to you because it, it was 
quite substantive in terms of the Johnson County aging presentation. Yes, absolutely. We had a nice presentation from Timothy Wolf from the Johnson County Department on Aging and Human Services. Um, it was a Communities for All Ages minded presentation on all of the array of services provided by that agency and how the city and the Sustainability Commission members in particular could help some support that. So we've talked a lot about communication, um, you know, Meals on Wheels, transportation services, housing repairs, all types of services. They have a really wonderful one-stop shop phone number um, that is staffed by live people. That is a really wonderful first step for anyone in the community who is looking for services of really any type for older adults, which we would recommend and promote going forward. And there's some additional materials we'll add to our website. Um, we had um, the regular discussions of other things. We'll have a smart recycling workshop um, in April um, at the community center. In addition to, of course, our cleanup on Saturday, the 22nd of April. Um, so just lots of activities with the spring coming up, I would say. Yeah, something to add, um, the 3rd of April, we'll have the Sustainability Commission meeting and I'll be giving the presentation mm -hmm. on my Galapagos Island trip with the different, mm -hmm. different sustainable practices that they use. Also, I sit on Johnson County Solid Waste Commission, and we had a phenomenal presentation last week that I will bring to the Sustainability Commission. And it's a person that owns, I don't know, 40 acres or so in, in Lee Summit that has put together every kind of recycling that they can from concrete mm -hmm. to rain pieces. And I mean, just a whole array of things. And it's a phenomenal presentation. And I don't have a copy of it yet. But when I get it, I plan on sharing it because it's one out of two in the whole country. Uh -huh. So it's really kind of neat that we have that in our region. Great, thanks. All right, next up we have council members Loudon and Ryherd for Parks, Recreation and Tree Commission. I took notes, <laughs> <laughs> I took notes last time, so I was prepared for tonight. Um, so feasibility study, again, um, will be uh, presented soon. Uh, there's gonna be a stakeholder meeting, which it'll be presented then and to the council soon. Um, projectors in the meeting room in PAL community centers are going to be replaced instead of having them come down from the ceiling. They'll just be on the back wall, which will be exciting. Um, and then Mohawk, Mohawk Park will be getting picnic tables and uh, three of them are going to be ADA accessible, which I thought was really thoughtful. Mm -hmm. Only one was necessary, but we went the extra mile apparently and they're doing three. And again, phase one will be done by May. Um, hiring a part-time parks team and a full-time recreational coordinator. Hopefully that's going well. And then Tree City USA approved our status for the 21st uh, time, which is exciting. We're also getting an award in March. Um, and that's all I had. Yeah, I think um, another big piece too is they, they designated a subcommittee um, to kind of work through things that part PRT wants to focus on to recommend to council. Um, and we'll hopefully look to see a few of our PRT friends presenting to council here in the next few months. So um, that's something I'm really excited to see and excited to see that they've formed that subcommittee to, to do it. So, yep. Great. Next, we will hear an update from council member Boltinghouse on the Mission Magazine editorial board. Yes, thank you, Mayor. As council member Davis so graciously uh, referenced in his comments, um, <laughs> I was unable to make that meeting just being in the throes of diaper changes and uh, <laughs> feeding. So Jump yeah. in and rescue our new uh, dad. Um, the editorial board did meet last week and, and um, offered their congratulations to mm -hmm. council member Bolting house and his wife on the arrival of their new son. Um, we are actually in the process uh, in a final proofing uh, yesterday and today of the current issue of the Mission Magazine. So it should be uploaded to the printer before the end of the week and out uh, in homes at the end of the month. Um, I think we've talked about the fact or maybe shared with you that the editorial board has taken a slightly different approach this year to the magazines and they're sort of um, each issue will be themed. And so this first issue uh, has been themed around health and wellness. So excited to share some, you know, again, a great collection of stories of residents and businesses uh, focused on physical health, nutritional health, mental health, um, all of those aspects. So I think it's uh, exciting. And then I think the uh, editorial board decided that the second issue of the year will be focused on sustainability. So we have um, health and wellness, sustainability, arts and culture, not necessarily in this order, 
uh, pets and kids. And I'm drawing a complete blank on the fifth one. Um, mm -hmm. Do you remember what we talked? I can't. Well, come up with it. Anyway, it was all areas of interest. And so I think um, it's going to be a good year. We are still, we lost our editor. I think most of you know. Um, so we're still struggling to find a replacement editor. So it's been a little bit challenging as we're working. Uh, Metro Media was sold to a company that's based out of Chicago. And so we're working with editors and writers in Chicago. And so that's made this issue a little bit challenging, um, but we're getting there. And I'm really just focused on delivering that consistent quality um, with this product to our residents and surrounding neighbors. Great. And finally, we have council member Chosi with the family adoption committee. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as usual, in this half of the year, we haven't met as a family adoption committee since the last meeting, but I, I did want to touch on the comments from Council Member Davis about um, just looking towards budget priorities. I, I I would certainly echo that the the work of the family adoption committee, especially during the last three months of the year, is ex extremely intensive on volunteers and space and um, just time and energy. I, I think the impact is really great, um, but I, I think the committee itself would would uh, would echo a need for some. Um, just just thoughtfulness about how we can deliver a similar impact in a more efficient and more streamlined way. So as we're looking towards, you know, uh, budget priorities and, um, you know, just how we're going to operate things in the com in the next season, um, that's something to, to certainly think about. I think there, there's some um, good work being done, but it, it asks a lot of a lot of people at, at all at once and in a way that's maybe not sustainable. So. All right. Next, we'll move into the mayor's report. I do have BZA appointments this evening with term to expire December 31st, 2025. So when we made our board and commission appointments last December, we failed to consider the appointments for the Board of Zoning Appeals. All members terms expired December 31st, 2022. So tonight I put before you Robin Duclo, Mike Lee, Stuart Braden, and Aaron Wingert, who is here tonight. So thank you, Aaron, for coming out to be reappointed to the Board of Zoning Appeals, all with terms to expire on December 31st, 2025. By code, members of the BZA are appointed for three-year terms. Do we have a motion? Mayor, I move the City Council uphold the reappointments of Robin Duclo, Mike Lee, Stuart Braden, and Aaron Winger to the Board of Zoning Appeals with terms expiring December 31st, 2025. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Robin, will you please call the roll? Green. Aye. Walting House. Aye. Chosi. Aye. Davis. Aye. Thomas. Yes. Briard. Aye. Loudon. Aye. Inman. Aye. Motion carries. All right, next up is our city administrator's report. Ms. Smith, do you have any items tonight to share with the council? Uh, yes, just briefly. I don't have interim financial reports. Um, we're still, so it goes back to that position vacancy and who's struggling to get it all figured out. <laughs> That's um, my Achilles heel at the moment. But as we kind of touched on in our budget work session, I think from at least a sales tax perspective, um, things are, we started off the year in a relatively strong position. Uh, I think the preview of what we can expect with assessed valuation uh, as we head into the 2024 budget looks good. And we've been able to quantify uh, any impacts of the kind of BOTA tax refund. So pieces are starting to fall into place that help us uh, manage that, that picture over the course of this year. And as we head into the 2024 budget discussions, um, the only other thing I would have before I turn it over to our city clerk, Robin Folks, who is we're going to build into this meeting kind of that business update that council member Kring has asked for and asked for and asked for. Um, we'll uh, caveated with we'll miss some sometimes, but um, this is a great way, I think, to kind of preview that. Uh, again, I would reiterate that in the mission monthly, we're trying to highlight those things as well. Um, but this is just another great way to be able to talk about it and let you answer questions. Um, I think most of you are aware that there is a neighborhood meeting scheduled for next Monday evening, March 20th at the community center at 6.30 PM on the Millhouse uh, redevelopment project, which is the apartment project here along the Martway office buildings and then uh, north of Martway between Beverly and Dearborn. Um, the letter went out today to neighbors within 300 feet of the uh, project that we expanded the radius slightly over what it would would be and will be required legally for the planning commission meeting because we want to make sure we cast kind of cast that net. I'll forward a copy of that letter to you all uh, as well. It's basically just an invitation and sort of outlines 
um, the boundaries of their proposed project. And so the focus of Monday night's meeting will be, um, they'll give a brief presentation, but then more of an open house format so that as people um, have questions, they'll be available to kind of walk up and interact a little bit more directly with some uh, project boards and um, representatives from Millhouse. So this is a developer meeting. We're hosting it at the community center, but this is not the city's meeting. You're all welcome to attend. Um, and but you won't have any formal role or be asked to to make any comment um, there. And uh, again, this the focus of this will be on the physical components and the actual you know development of that. We we know that um, this developer also intends to make a request for incentives, um, but that will not be the subject of. Monday night's meeting. That's we're way premature in all of that. So focus will be on the development. And with that, I will turn it over to Robin. Thank you. So council member Kring has asked for business update monthly, which I am more than happy to give you because I love to watch our businesses thrive and mission. Um, so I have three business updates for you tonight. All of them are also highlighted in the mission monthly. <clears throat> excuse me, that went out earlier today. So Emily and I have been collaborating to try and make sure that we're getting that information out verbally and written um, to residents and to you all and to um, community partners. So the three updates that we have are the Casey's um, sort of urban, not a gas station on Johnson Drive in the old Hartman Hardware Building was supposed to open um, at the end of this week. They have had to push their opening back to April 26th. So they have a great, beautiful sign out now. They're hiring um, and they are excited to open. Second one is Tacos El Gallo. They are going to open in the old corner Lalo's kitchen spot at 50th and Lamar. Their exact address is 5038 Lamar and they hope to open on March 20th. And they also have a location in Kansas City, Missouri. So check them out. And then my third one is Resilience Brilliance, a new mental health counseling um, office that opened at 5515 Fox Ridge Drive, Suite 5. Um, so if anyone has any questions about businesses, I know Council Member Kring really wants us to have some more input from businesses about if they're leaving the city, why? So we're working on the kindest, easiest way to get that information. Unfortunately, we don't often know that businesses have left unless someone lets us know or we get a return mail or we send out renewal letters in the spring and they come back to us. But I'm hoping to sort of um, have that conversation with business owners a little bit more easily about if they're considering leaving well. If there's anything city-wise we can look at to help them. Um, there's a one uh, retail spot that um, the business recently closed. It was Lux by Mitzi, and that was because of space constraints. So she needed to expand. Same with Super Kids Club. Uh, they closed in November and have reopened in a different city again because of space constraints. That's my report. If anyone has any questions. Mm -hmm. Yes, Debbie. Yeah, Debbie. There's a honey place that's gone where the cleaners was in the Martway and... American, American honey. honey. What is that? It's a hair salon. It's a hair salon. Oh, I thought it was honey that you had. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Robin. Good we job. Great. Okay. All right. Does that conclude your conclude your report, Laura? Yes. All righty. This one. Oh, yep. Ken, did you have a question? Just, uh, I think, did we have the uh, UMKC Urban Planning Senior Project? Is that something that you mentioned? I don't oh, know. I, next Wednesday evening at what time? Mm -hmm. The 22nd. It's Wednesday the 22nd at 6.30. Community Center. And that is related to our Planning Sustainable Places grant, right? Or that corridor, mm -hmm. or close to that corridor. Yeah, the opposite way. That's, that's right. Okay. It's kind of a studio project. Studio project for this other way. Got it. Great. All right. Before we adjourn tonight, I want to share with the public that the video from this meeting will be available through a link on our website at missionks.org. There being no further business tonight, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. We are adjourned.